In about six years, the United Kingdom will have completely collapsed. Recently, it has already resulted in the resignation or dismissal of five prime ministers and the lowest value of the British pound against the US dollar since 1985. The economy has officially entered a recession, and it will be the longest recession in history. The decline in the quality of life is accelerating. Currently, inflation stands at close to 10%. Well, GDP is barely expanding. And to top it all off, Scotland is on the verge of declaring independence, which will likely lead Northern Ireland to declare independence, which will also kick out the UK from the top 10 greatest economies. On the other hand, we know you are curious on what exactly this would mean to us and to the rest of the world. So, welcome to Investing Path. And for today's video, we will be delving into this matter, so make sure to watch till the end. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, and bell button to keep seeing more of our content as we move forward. Now, without further ado, let's begin. So for a bit of a background, a little more than a century ago, the British Empire, including the whole Pacific, from New Zealand to Canada via India, the Middle East, and Africa, it was the only empire in history where day turned into night. In 1929, at the height of the British Empire, they controlled roughly a quarter of the planet. With a growing economy, the British pound has become the world's de facto currency of choice. London was the political and commercial center of the globe, and it was home to some of the largest corporations in the world. But in a little over a century, Britain lost 90% of its colonies. The British pound continues to decline in value and the country's economy is in even one of the world's top five. As a matter of fact, India, a former British colony, has surpassed the United Kingdom to become the world's fifth largest economy. The United Kingdom may not exist in less than 10 years if current trends continue. At that point, only England will remain. At this point, I believe that even London will declare its independence. To prevent a further economic downturn, the Bank of England is pleading with investors to accept lower interest rates. However, England's raise to raise interest rates to 3.5% is the most it's been in 14 years due to the greatest inflation in decades. When interest rates go up, it costs more to borrow money. Therefore, businesses cut back on borrowing, which can lead to wage cuts, layoffs, and the postponement or outright cancellation of long-term projects that won't generate enough revenue to cover their costs. Expenses and putting food on the table will take precedence. Wage gains over the past eight years may be nullified by this precipitous decline in buying power. Interest rates increase as wage growth lags behind inflation. The last eight years of development are going to vanish in the blink of an eye, as if they never happened. When the economy is in shambles, the first thing to do is to remove obstacles to commerce. People will start moving to your country en masse once they learn how to much less living cost and how much simpler doing business are there. Everyone avoids paying their fair share of taxation for this very reason. When Ireland lowered its corporate tax rate to 12.5%, the very next day, every company in the world moved its headquarters there. The ILS today has a GDP per capita that is double that of the UK. In fewer than 30 years, Dubai cut taxes and constructed infrastructure for businesses. It constructs a metropolis that serves as a magnet for the world's affluent. The catch is, however, the British are participating. Instead of addressing the underlying causes of the current economic crisis, the government is responding by increasing taxes. You should avoid raising taxes at all costs. Higher corporate taxes will eventually force businesses to leave. If they do go, it will reduce the labor force and lead to more unemployment and lower tax revenue. And companies won't just roll over and take it. They'll find methods to avoid paying their fair share of taxes by, say, moving their headquarters. However, they will inevitably charge higher prices to their clients. So. Kudos if you've implemented tax increases to combat inflation. Congratulations on playing yourself if you help drive up inflation. 
Even if the government is profitable right now, it will inevitably become a money loser in the future. We're not saying taxes shouldn't exist. They should. We're just arguing that it's counterproductive to increase them when people are prospering and new enterprises are eager to set up shop. But now that the world economy is contracting, you shouldn't phrase taxes either. That, however, demonstrates just how low the British government has stopped. They have no choice but to increase their demands on those who are still contributing financially. Due to government bureaucracy and inefficiency, it is no longer possible to reallocate monies from one program to another. That is very indicative of how dire things are right now. And that's not all. It is predicted that property values may fall by as much as 9% by the end of the year due to the ongoing economic crisis. Deflation is problematic since it multiplies over time. When home prices begin to fall, most people don't rush out to buy a new house. Instead, they wait for prices to reach rock bottom before making a purchase. You wait for a stock to reach rock bottom before buying it so that you can make the most money possible. Everything else is the same way. A new housing market crisis might occur within the next year or two if the 9% drop is the demand that leads to dropping prices double or tripling. The global economy in the 2000s further damaged Britain's already weak economy. In comparison to the average earnings of about £19,000, the average cost of a property was just over £93,000. In 2022, housing prices grew by 300%, while well, the average pay rose by less than half. The typical bridge worker has never seen housing costs this high. The UK property market has become a dangerous bubble that may easily implode and bring the entire economy to its knees. And the current crisis has the potential to be the catalyst that causes that bubble to pop. What we're witnessing right now is only a preview of what's to come. Many people's life savings may be wiped out, especially if they took out mortgages and then saw the value of their properties drop. When you include in the steadily climbing prices of both food and fuel, the result is economic chaos. Scotland's desire to secede from the United Kingdom is predictable. With a comfortable majority of 51.9%, Britain voted to leave the EU. David Cameron, the prime minister at that time, resigned in the wake of that unexpected revelation. Britain's chances of thriving in the 21st century without the European Union are slim. As a result of this transformation, Britain is no longer the dominant empire in the world, while the United Kingdom is in trouble after leaving the European Union. Britain has no intention of letting Scotland off the hook. Laws have been passed that make holding another referendum difficult. But you can see where this is going. Britain hasn't been its current state of turmoil overnight. It is the result of a number of separate crises that have built up over the course of many years. British politics have been in disarray ever since Brexit. And things are just getting worse, with the pandemic's effects and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now, so far, what do you think of these recent events? Do you think the UK is in such a difficult situation now? Or could they easily still handle this kind of problem? Whatever your thoughts are, make sure to share them in the comments section below. But other than that, thanks for watching. This is Investing Path. And if you enjoyed watching this one, then go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, and bell button to see more of our personal financing and investment uploads for you. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.